quit. Rainy. Pretty mediocre day, but no one else was here, so <laughs> that's really good. Um, today, I will be shooting the 12 inch barrel 284, shooting the 162 ELD match. A few groups, and just at 100 yards, two shot groups. This is going to be my dedicated bush rifle. So, I got the chronograph again, and all my bits and pieces. So, let's get into it. So you're probably you're probably wondering why like why this and I just want to make it really clear if you're thinking about going for a really really nice short barrel if you just go and grab a standard 7 mm eight and try and run factory ammunition through a 12 inch barrel you're pretty much going to ruin it so this has been rechambered to a full Winchester and the componentry that I'm using to be able to achieve I'm pretty much getting around 2600 feet per second with the 162. There's a few things that you really, I just don't want you to go and be like, that's a good idea, and just go and chop your your rifle, because this is very componentry heavy to be able to get these velocities out of this length barrel. So first of all, with the Savages, on their short action, you can run this at three inches overall length. And this chambering has also got quite a bit of freebore put into that chambering so it does actually speed it up a little bit so yes my projectiles are jumping a long way so I think I might struggle with really really good accuracy with this rifle but I still get my speed but it's just a bush rack so that's fine so this has obviously got a lot more powder capacity than the 708 um, another thing as well is I'm using Lapua brass I'm using Reloader 17. I didn't want to use my Reloader 26 in this little short action, it wasn't really worth it. Um, but basically, because of my componentry, I'm able to get some pretty fantastic velocities out of such a short barrel. Anyway, there's the guff. So, this group I'm going to be running is 53.3 grains. Cold barrel, true cold barrel. Um, Sweet, this one looking good. So here's my original um, ladder test, actually, for the two eight four short. <coughs> So we started down 2486, 2497, the first two ladders, so they were a group, well they were the same charge weight, then shot three and four were the same charge weight, and they're only three feet per second apart, and then I came up to this charge weight up here, five and six, and you can see those were five feet per second apart. So just two shot ladder, ladder testing for pressure and I found that up here I was just I was just a little bit too warm. Wasn't really that happy with it. Um, so yeah so we went all the way to 54 grains up here and I didn't shoot 55 grains because I just it was just a bit too hot. So we're starting back down we're at, actually at the lower end here. We're sort of starting right between shot two and three with grouping, so we're down at 53.3 grains. What's pretty neat about these chronos is it actually tells you the time when you shoot. So you can actually just keep it set up and gap your shots the correct distance apart, which is really 
makes for some real consistent results, which is cool. Go and grab one of these guys. They're really good, you won't regret it. More rain. Two five nine nine. Groups of bad. Hopefully this one's a bit better though. Let's see how we go. Oh man, those spreads. The spreads are so good. The spread is like it's so good, <laughs> but the groups are bad. Pressure's fine. The groups are three inches. Right, so we've got that shot another eight minutes. Do this is. 53.7 grains. So hopefully, this is a really nice fruit. Well, <laughs> right. 2600 feet second on the money. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so this didn't go very well. My spreads were fantastic. My worst spread, over two shots, admittedly. Um, some of them were going, like that last one was within seven feet per second of the second, so it's very strange. So I am going to go get the target. So what I'm noticing is my actual groups are just terrible three four inches and my point of impact keeps moving to the right <laughs> so i have a hunch there's one part of the rifle that i did not set up i left that to a gunsmith um, to put the bases on the rifle and i just assumed that it was done well, I never checked it, so I have a really bad feeling that these bases are loose, because it just doesn't make sense that I keep moving across. So I'm going to go get the target, I've got some tools here, and I'm going to test it out, and if it is, I'll be like well and truly annoyed, because it's the one, I usually set my rifles fully up myself, it's the one component, but hopefully that is what it is, otherwise I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's our first group aiming here, and that's like 70 mils, <laughs> it's just under 3 inches, that's bad. Then our second group aiming here, and usually I'm punching, you know, that's just under an inch, that circle, so usually I can just punch, 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 and yeah. but anyway, next group, that's 74 mils, so that's 3 inches. And then the last, sorry, so that's uh, <clears throat> that's that group aiming there, heading out here. And I thought, well, the last group I could aim here, but I didn't want to. So I aimed here, and it's punching way out here. So that last group is 70 mils as well. So it sort of seems to me that it's been moving. It seems to me like it started moving across a lot. Alright, so I'm just going to check the rings, and they are super tight, there's no slide marks on the rings, so now I'm going to take the scope off, that's super tight, oh man that's like butcher tight, I did that though. <clears throat> Oops, 
back of the stock fell down on that thing. Should probably just chuck it in my gun case kit. Work on it there, but it's in there. That's where. Oh, this feels wrong. I've never had to do this. And I somehow, I sort of hope that it is. The base is loose, but I hope for the sake of the gunsmith that it's not, because I'll mention his name. <laughs> Alright, so let's check this out. Oh my goodness. They are freaking loose. What a waste of everybody's time. Why? That's Mr. Max gunsmithing, guys. Sorry, Mitch, if you're watching this, but that really ticks me off. If I asked you to put some bases on, surely you can tighten them up. I don't know. Bit of him, bit of me. I should have checked it, I suppose. Oh, that's annoying. Oh. They're loose as a goose. Don't know. What do you guys think? Here goes 25 shots. What do you think? If you get your gunsmith to put some bases on, like, I mean, you can call me stupid for assuming, but should he be tightening them? It's like, shoot, man. Back to square. Well, I've got my speeds. <laughs> oh, one more trip to the range, I guess, with a whole lot more groups. <clears throat> but there you go. Mr. Max Gunsmithing of Belmont. What do you guys think? That really annoys me. Like, we're really cool to promote things on YouTube, like, oh, you got to buy this jacket, but... <laughs> That's so annoying. That's two range trips. And I, at first, at the first, I thought, this is really odd. This rifle is a very accurate rifle, like I've shot. I, I've been shooting single feed. I've been shooting... I've done, like, five or six load developments for it now. So I should have known on the first time something's wrong, but is that my bad or gunsmith's bad? Or is it both? I'm going to put it both. The only part of the rifle I didn't check. I'm just assuming that if you hand it to a gunsmith, he's going to do it properly. Now, so there you go. So I'm sure it'll group nicely now, but again, I just was wondering why I just could not get anything better than a three inch group and when I saw those groups just slowly moving to the right I was like I betcha I betcha I betcha I betcha the gunsmith has left the bases loose all right there you go so I haven't got my group yet but there's your speeds if you're interested to put in a bit of context my other rifle is a Savage and that has, it's a long action and is throated to an overall length jumping, it's only jumping about seven thousandths using the 180 grain ELD match so it has a different twist rate than this rifle here it's a 1 in 8 I believe it is and it is a hardy stainless barrel finished at 20.2 inches so my other rifle is, you know, finishes at 3.15 overall length, I believe it is, so quite a bit longer. Um, and that is shooting the 180 ELD match bullet very, very nicely into about half an inch. And it's shooting that at 27.70 feet per second. So that particular projectile has a massive ballistic coefficient um, and same component tree it's even the same uh, reamer <laughs> chambering reamer uh, and as, as this rifle here right that sums up this video I'm probably not going to make another video you'll see this rifle out in the field uh, I'm going to take it out in probably three weeks into the bush and it's all set up for dialing as well so I'll get the group sorted and probably touch touch base on it next next video so but there you go 
12 inch barrel 284 not bad eh not bad running the 162 I'll get those groups I'll get them at 2600 feet per second bang on the money um, the 